Okay. I had to wait. Almost 24 hours to make this video because yesterday, actually the day before yesterday, uh, Martin Luther King Day, uh, I was going for a lap swim at uh, my club, you know, my gym. It's going to to the pool, and there was one Karen getting out of the pool and one about to get in. The one getting out was questioning why I was there and why I was putting my things near her. And she didn't say it to me, she said it to the two lifeguards, and I'll use that term, I'll, I'll, I'll use that term lightly. The two gentlemen that were there to guard the pool for life, when she asked them, I thought they had to wait until I was in the locker room and had left before they came to the pool. And I don't know who, which day she was referring to. It didn't really care, occur to me. I was so happy on Martin Luther King Day, I'd be able to go swimming in the, the pool that I've been swimming in since I was 10 years old. Okay, and I, just, I hadn't been in the pool in a while and I was looking forward to this. And when she said they, I thought they had to wait until we I said, oh, the, 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 you know, I, I'll put my stuff down there. I thought she was, so I mean, and I was like, I, I realized she was not a lifeguard. And I asked the, the lifeguards, who is that? And she said, oh, she's a long-term member. I said, oh, so am I. And I put my stuff down. And one of, you know, I went to put my stuff down. And one of the, the lifeguards started following me to put my stuff down. And I was like, can I help you? And he's like, well, you know, um, he, he, he was, he was had, like hesitated. This is the older of the two lifeguards. Okay, he's an older gentleman, Hispanic. Um, and, you know, he, I think he felt a little intimidated. I'm 6'4". And so he just he really just kept going. But I felt like that dude, the dude that goes to the bodega at 2 o'clock in the morning for formula for his baby, and the store owners treat him like he's, the thug that rips him off for forties, you know, on, on on a regular, you know, some some punk punk kids from the neighborhood, you know. So I felt like I was being watched in the bodega, and I'm I'm here for a lap swim. I, I've got on all I've got on is a pair of swim trunks, a, a tank top, a, you know, a, a, a t-shirt style top. I have on my Columbia swimwear, okay. And I, all I want to do is go for a swim, and so there's a that Karen's leaving. So that wasn't too bad because I said, look, you're a long-term member lady. I probably went swimming with you as a kid. You just don't remember me. And so I get in and I do half a lap. I go all the way out of the other end of the pool where the uh, the swim the the uh, diving boards are. And I get in the deep end and I start backstroking just to relax. I like to swim backwards. I'll just backstroke and float, tread water up and down the lap you know i got 45 minutes i can do whatever i want i you know, I, I get to the other side of the pool the shallow end and karen number two is like excuse me do you mind if i get in the middle lane with you or sharing the middle lane i'm like yes i do because this is a three lane lap pool and no under the current stances of covid and everything like like that's why i booked the early morning uh uh, uh, uh you know appointment time for my swim and so it was so I would I was hoping there was nobody else in the pool. And it's a three lane pool. And I asked when I came in, which lane is mine? Meaning mine solo John, not John Six Four John and Roly Poly Karen sharing the lane with John. I was like, no, I'll get out. And then when I mentioned to the lifeguards, well, you, you, you understand we're in a pandemic and this is like this is outrageous. I was here first, she's late. The people in the left and the right lanes, they're they're here left over from the previous session. And they really you should really see, tell them to get out. And they're like, uh, it, uh, if you don't want to swim the lane, sir, you need, basically you need to get the fuck out. Okay, so you know after being dissed by the millennial and being stalked around the place by the the, the, the other guy, the other Latin lifeguard, pool, the pool cleaners, basically the pool cleaners, the glorified pool cleaners. Because I don't think they would be able to save me. 
I wouldn't want them trying to save me if I had a problem in this pool. Put it like that, all right? So, <laughs> and they couldn't. I've been swimming most of my life. I, I learned in that pool when I was 10 how to swim. Okay, and I, I said, I'm not gonna say anymore how old I am. I've been swimming in that pool since I was 10. So basically before this dude was born. And I could be his grandfather, okay? So, and he's, and he's like acting like, you know, he's being a Latin cracker, basically. All right, and I, and I, and I, all right, I, I did. I called him a cracker. Um, there's a cracker was working at the front desk uh, at, at, at the club. I called him a cracker because I said I want to reschedule my lap time for later. And he's like, I don't know if there's room or whatever. People, the white privilege is out of control. How can I? Oh, and then you're going to love this. Then the third Karen, wait, there's more. There was a third Karen. I forgot about her. She's the director of, of the aquatic director for the for the uh, for the club and she co-signed everything the lifeguards did like well you know you do have to share lane i was like oh no 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 somebody some some lady that thinks we're still it's 400 i'm like this is like the django unchained shit is going on she's trying to tell me well that's the rule we're doing i'm like i am not getting in a, a three-lane pool with six people in it with five other people in it besides me i don't care what you say that is not safe for me because of my age, because I'm an ex-smoker, yes, I used to smoke about, I don't know, 10 new points a day. I was a closet smoker. I work, in, I work in education. We weren't supposed to let the kids see us smoking. That ain't necessary. I don't, I don't, it's, that's still the case. The, the educators in their, in, in, their, in, their, in their right mind do not let the kids see, kids see them do anything they're telling them, not, that the student not to do. You can't, it doesn't work that way. You can, it's not do as I say, not as I do. It's do as I say, not as I do. That never goes over with the kids. It won't go over with your kids. It didn't go over with me for, that's what, when I started smoking. It didn't go over with, I started smoking, cool, so then the ultimately, because they were free, because I was uh, sneaking them from my mother and father, they smoked cool, super long 100s. They weren't gonna miss one of them suckers. <laughs> you know, they were huge. You know, um, I didn't get greedy, and I worked in a, in, a, in a store where I had access to free, the compliment, they used to give away cigarettes, people. That's how they, it works the same for crack. They did the same model for crack. You give it away first, and then once you got everybody hooked, they're done. It's like, you know, the, the man, the, the men, like Nino, Nino Brown, they said, the man who made slaves out of men. That's Nino Brown. That was the pusher man back then. That's what Curtis Mayfield was talking about. I'm your pusher man, cause you know, you're making money, but you, your money means your mama can end up, your brother could be a crack baby because your mama ends up strung out in the very crack you're selling. Which is exactly what happened to a number of rappers. I'm not gonna name any particular names, but if you know anything about hip hop, there are a couple of very prominent rappers that sold drugs to their mother. I can think of three. Of the top five, no, no, let me stop. Oh, ooh, I can think of several very prominent hip hop artists that sold drugs to their own family. Okay, so this is nothing new to the black community. The black community, that was the reason why, new, and that's why I say we are New Jack City 2021. That's where we are, people. And I will do my best to explain for as long as I can, broadcasting my pirate single, signal to you because look i i almost got kicked out of the male dormitory where i live in because i went outside like this i went outside like this and somebody freaked out i even even a more bizarre get up that i'm going to try to see if that has anybody ready to call the cops because in that get up you won't be able to tell them black okay so we'll see what we'll test this theory i have that because i'm a black person doing these things I am not your Negro. I want to say the other one, but I'm not going to say it. I don't know how we're going to convince these Kens and Karens that me, my neighbor was Barack Obama, not Ja Rule, okay? My neighbor was 
Barack Obama, was Barack Obama, uh, was Adam Clayton Powell Jr., um, was Cory Booker. Oh, I got I agree with my neighbor was. It, I personally, I know Cory Booker. Personally, I personally met him. I made him at a fundraiser for his second attempt at becoming mayor of Newark. And I was there to get jobs for my kids at the new school I was helping to open as the work study director. I know his cousin. If I ever have an issue with domestic law or criminal law, his cousin Ernest Booker, the gentleman famously known for telling Corey not to run against Sharps games the first time, he said it's too soon. You're not you, the community doesn't love you enough yet. You need to wait and don't the street fight. The name of the video is Street Fight, and you should watch it. Okay, because I know these people and I've talked to these people. I'm an educator and I interviewed them, you know, kind of on the sly. Like, but I make mental notes anywhere of everybody I ever meet, and they know I'm an educator, so they know I'm saying, I'm telling them ultimately, I need I'm going to come back to you for a quote. For either for uh, uh, research work I'm doing, on you know, for university, or for my own personal journal, you know, for my own memoirs. So they know I'm gonna. I'm getting quotes. I'm quoting people. I got quotes from these people. Okay, about youth empowerment, youth mentorship. I studied how to empower youth. From two from, Ernest Booker, is responsible for. The um, the uh, the culturing of Mary J. Blige. Because he kept her out of trouble, right? And he he he, he you know he kind of did a Suzanne the pass on Mary J. Blige. Him and his wife. They kept the streets from getting her, and they kept their eye on the prize. And you know, and love is blind. I'm sorry. I really you know I I can feel for what happened with a marriage, but you know that's they couldn't help her with that. You know, love when love calls, when love is calling your name, there's nobody to get in the way. Nobody. No one can get in the way. When the force is calling you and you th you think you're in love, you're gone. I, I know from personal experience. So, you know, you know, I, I was very I was very upset to find out that it didn't work out for her. I'm no, I'm not I'm I'm lying. I'm not <laughs> I'm not upset. Her and Janet either. I'm really not upset that they, they their relationship didn't work out. But I, no more than I, I know that they love these people very much. I know that. Just as like I love my former wives as much. I had three, three ex-wives. I love them all very much. You know, they were re, they were reason maybe a season, but not a lifetime. And that's the only thing I would go for right now is someone that's going to be there for the till death do us part. I don't care if we get married or not. We just got to be together. I'm exclusive to you and you're exclusive to me. And if I give if I'm giving you love unconditionally, you should do the same in return. Like Teddy Vinegrass said, it's so good when you loving somebody and then somebody's loving you back. That is fire, people. That is Barack and Michelle. Or Michelle and Barack. However you want to say it. That's Michelle and Barack. That's that's fire right there. Okay? And no man. What God has, 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 uh, what the force has joined together, <laughs> you got to keep this non-denominational religion is man-made people. Spirituality is everybody. We are, we are all part of this all. We are all stardust. We're all star children. On this starship, uh, 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 right next to the mothership, our sun, and we're traveling in excess of 125, 120,000 kilometers per hour to the other side of the galaxy. And the galaxy is in the, the air elements. And the first constellation we encounter on our, on our starship, our starships, I should say, in this mothership fleet, the first one we encounter uh, is this constellation of Aquarius. And that being, you know, that's going to be great for the people that really vibe really well with water signs, like Pisces. I do. My dad's a Pisces. My best friend is a Pisces. My best ex-wife is a Pisces so I got a lot of reasons to like what's happening right about now with what is going to happen as a result uh, for the next 20 years the next 20 years Aquarius has has this and that's great so if you were a, 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 an air sign air sign 
air elemental, you were born under the, those constellations, you have a very special time. And at the top of the list is those people that were born under the sign of Aquarius. And that's all I got to say about that. And I got to go because I'm still trying to teach kids with this stuff going on. Okay, and this is day this is day 416. I I count my date of self awareness, and that date is uh will be Thanksgiving when when of 2019. Okay, and if I calculate it correctly, and I'm pretty sure I did. Today is 416 some odd days, the consecutive days that I am COVID free. And how do I know that? Because I can still breathe uh, and um, I haven't been sick. And I've been tested, I, I just get tested twice in less than a month for possible re-entry to school. And actually, my, I don't think my doctor's gonna recommend I get tested anymore because I've been negative for, for over, almost a year and a half. Let's see, uh, uh, November, October, September, by my birthday, which is May 6th, um, I will be a year and a half consecutive COVID negative. And I plan on making that landmark. It, it falls approximately on my birthday. And so I'm, I'm just practicing with the mask because I'm going to have to teach like this if we go back to in person. And I won't be wearing anything like this. I'm covering my whole head. And I, I, I dare anybody to say anything to me. Because I wish somebody would spit on me or throw some something on me, some biohazard on me or something like that, some urine or something like that. It's going to be on. Because this is coming with me. I'm sorry, my hip is bothering me since, uh, you know, the, 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 the pandemic. My hip bothers me. I, I need this cane. This is a cane. It's a, actually, it's a walking stick. It's a it's a gentleman's defensive walking stick, and it's the Bat Masterson editions is a replica of one of Bat Masterson's. Uh, this is the one. This is exact replica of the Bat Masterson, <laughs> and it's not a pimp stick unless the crown is icy. This ain't icy. I might I might ice it up. I don't know. And see, there's nothing in this. I twirl this. I twirl this and throw it. Uh, I'm trying not to break it. I've already lost the tip by practicing on this one. Okay? There's nothing in this one. This is the, what it looks like. It's a walking stick. The one with the eagle head on it has the blade in it. This is not that one. Okay? Okay, because it's the, 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 you need to beat the properly counterweight this in this stick. Because it, it's balanced. Wherever the point, wherever you get to the point, this is the crazy thing about this. They built, they make this stick so that is the point of balance, and that is also the point that I can spin this either hand with my wrist. Okay, I'm I'm hitting myself and in, in, in my hood and everything, but once you find the center point of this, the key to this is is your thumb. Your thumb is what 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 makes it spin, and you can do it with your thumb. It's in and out in and out and don't hit yourself with this or you'll be sorry but that's all you need to spin this okay I'll, I'll prove it see my thumb goes in and out in and out in and out and around it goes that's it and the more you practice you'll be able to spin it so fast it's gonna look like it's just spinning around on your finger and it, and it is it will be you'll because you're you're you have found the center of, of, of centri the center of uh, centrifugal force on this on this balanced walking stick, and it, it works the same way for baton twirlers, by the way, and for Jedi uh, lights uh, sabers. For the movie, everybody, you know, Samuel L. Everybody learned how to how to twirl lightsabers. It's just a stick. A lightsaber is just a stick. That's I have one. I'm gonna I'm gonna be spinning that one before it's over. I'm gonna be twirling that one just like I this. Okay, call it a useless COVID skill. I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway. Stay safe.
this is not over. You gotta wear your mask. You gotta stay. If, if you're gonna be within six feet and that's arm's length, put it like that. Okay, this fully extended, I'm gonna do this again. My arm is three and a half feet long. I'm six foot four inches tall. I'm over six feet tall, probably closer to six five. It depends on if I slouch or not. And how much gravity, how long I've been standing up. Because if you if I if I invert myself, I get taller. Did you know that? <laughs> if you're if you're the age where you're starting to lose height, just do play like a bat. Do like Batman and hang up hang by your ankles. And you'll get some of the height back. And it'll force you to keep your back straight. So you don't get that that, that enhanced that extra hump in your back. You know, because the people curve the spine. The curve at the top of your back is supposed to be to support your neck. And if you lean forward, it start. It, you know, it gets, it gets, you know, anyway. Practice good posture. You know, your future, your future back will thank you. Uh, and again, um, maintain six feet. If you're gonna be in contact, face to face with someone that you assume is COVID positive. If they're not in your bubble, you can assume they're COVID positive. That's the way to play this. And is a good chance we're going to shut down for 90 days. After 10 days of helping out those most in need. And that would be the children with school. Because these schools can't reopen without the proper uh, personal protection equipment. And... Uh, This is not it. This is not. This is. This is not. The, 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 what you need to re-enter a school. I, I'll show you what you need, but this is. This is not going to do it for me. Not when I'm at risk because of my age, and I used to smoke cigarettes five, uh, four or five years ago. You know. And while my lung capacity is really great now. I, you know, I can tell because I can bark, I can bark a classroom or an auditorium. I don't need a, I don't need a microphone in a classroom or auditorium. It's coming from down in the, the, my natural microphone, my natural amplifier down in my diaphragm. I sing too, so that helps. I project, you project your voice and it comes from underneath your lungs. You use your diaphragm, which is underneath, which is what separates your lungs from your lower intestines. You use that to force the air at whatever pace you want through your vocal cords. And that's how you sing. It's almost like a bellows effect. It acts like a bellows is squeezing, squeezing a, uh, a bulb. Think of the, the lung as like a, a bulb of air. And you're, you're, and you're squeezing air, more air pressure through your vocal cords to talk, to speak, or to sing by using a diaphragm that's right underneath your lungs and, and, and <clears throat> constricting that and forcing it, forcing the air pressure to increase inside your lungs and thus the air to get faster through your throat and your larynx, okay? Yeah, I know it's an awfully complicated way to explain how we sing, but it's accurate, okay? I teach, you know, so I, we gotta, we, do, we sweat the details. I'm sorry, we just have to. Because if we, if, we if we don't get the details right, these kids, we're, we're done. We're, you know, with with the um, we're the the we're the Greek we're the we're, we're the we're the teachers we're the storytellers. The African, it was word of mouth in Africa. There were no books. How are you going to keep books? Only people that had houses kept books. All right. If you were living, if you're a nomad, books are heavy. You would not have me. You might have one, like a journal, but a, a library of books? Pfft. Maybe King Solomon when he went mobile. Carry a library, maybe. Because somebody else is carrying it, not because he had to. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, I will show you what you need to be inside a, a school and properly protected. It's, it's better if I show you. I got some stuff on order. I've been showing you. This is a sport mask number two. It's one port. But this is pretty selfish because, well, for one side, for the left side, I can exhale through this and it's fine. And when I inhale, my filter is basically covering my nose and, and my mouth. 
unfortunately you're inside of school and people like to you have spitters and I don't okay I have to say <laughs> you have hitters spitters and shitters in a school when you have speci specially able children so you really need to protect all of the openings into your body that aren't underneath clothing and that would be your ears your eyes your nose and your mouth and how do you do that you have to have on a helmet you have to have on a helmet or a hood that covers your entire head and that means you have to have your own air supply because you can't really breathe properly with your head covered with basically a bucket okay so some stuff has to happen that nobody has money for you know i i've got i've got other things to buy i could buy some very expensive respiration equipment and the whole time next suit and i i, I would estimate you could probably do it for under a thousand dollars you know all in because you're going to need to resupply oxygen if you want to see the the supermodels are, came in from Fashion Week, they were they wear the Naomi Campbell wears the whole Tyvek suit, has her own self-contained air supply, and none of her personal body or clothing touch any part of the plane, because she's in the total suit. She looks like straight out of that uh, uh, that movie with Dustin Hoffman. Uh, what is it? Uh, Quarantine or Fever or whatever that movie was with Dustin Hoffman, Outbreak or whatever that movie is where the where the virus gets loose. And the whole town is dying that kind of suit the supermodels came in for fashion week wearing that kind of stuff and i know that has nothing to do with this me with the triple karens but it's important information that you need to know you know it's my closing statement to everybody and this is 30 minutes i'm sorry to all my 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 style uh, uh and um and um i won't even say but my all of my manifestation consultants no matter what capacity you might be in and whether that be me personally one of my three personal favorite uh consultants that'd be me myself and i um depending on the outcome of our of our uh our cons uh, consulting with me myself and i and my um uh manifestation consultants which you don't need to know who they are um once we've all talked I, I think it's quite clear we come to the same conclusion um that right now uh the truth is very important and it's very important that everybody remain calm and be nice be gentle with each other and i just i'm really beating my own self up for 24 hours ago uh i did not follow my own advice Okay, and I had to, I, I had to apologize. I apologized profusely to to the you know I, I I accused someone of being something they're not. One of the three people is not a Karen. One and a half of them I are no, I know. One is definitely a Karen. One it could go either way because it seemed kind of innocent. Can I share the middle lane with you? You know why would she want to get in the pool with me? And the other lady r jump out of the pool when she saw a nigga getting ready to get in the pool with her? I don't know. This probably has something to do with age and sexual preferences. I have no clue. But I do know this. Um, we the people are going to make this happen. We the people are going to get us through this and out of this. And anybody that doesn't transform over the next three years or the next 200 years, anyone that's not on board... The love train is going to look awfully foolish. Okay? This is the love always wins and always has. And love don't love nobody. And love is ready, always patient, always kind, slow to anger. All the things, you know, you, you, well, you know these things. Do you know who are some of the best, the most religious people on the planet are the atheists because they live by the guidelines and code that uh 
those of us that read other scriptures and and teachings we may read them on sunday or saturday or friday but what really dictates what you manifest that you show that you learn anything is what you do when you if you practice can you practice what you preach just like the Barry White song. You keep telling me this and telling me that, and once I'm with you, I'll never go back. But here's the lesson I like to teach. Here I am, baby, practice what you preach. That's Barry White, okay? You gotta practice what you preach. And I will conclude with this. There's a, there's a very good book out there if you've got uh, middle-aged kids if you got kids that are nine plus years old and they they'll either let you read to them or they'll read they'll read an audio book or maybe follow along in a physical book a physical book with pages to turn an audio recording to listen to while turning the pages hint hint because you're, le you're re learning to read and reading to learn at the same time when you do that and getting the and getting the information from two sources from your ear and from your eye um yes so read with and for your children spend the next three years i am quite serious about this on self improvement don't worry about what karen's doing don't worry about what ken's doing don't worry about what john's doing do you if you cannot find the, the story, the book you should read to your kids, it's called Any Small Goodness. And we did it with our kids, our middle schoolers, right before we went on um, Thanksgiving break. Uh, I'm sorry, no, right before we went on winter recess. I can't even call it Christmas break. Yeah, I'm calling it Christmas break. I'm calling it that. Christmas is a spirit of well-being. And it, although it uses a pagan name, that's how it gets snuck in there. That's how love gets stuck in there for, for, the, for the, the last, between Thanksgiving and the end of the year. The trifecta, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. The three lo uh, holidays of love, regardless of what your religion, religion is man-made people, that's, that's people-made. That's about I and me and my. Me, me, me. That's religion. That is not spirituality. Spirituality is, there is no I. <laughs> like Bruce Lee said, there is no I. And be like water. Be like water, people. Flow with it. Don't fight the current. Don't fight the feeling. I, I'm saying exactly what's on my mind. I always have. And I learned that from my grandmother. And I, I've learned that you've got to temper it with courtesy. And you got to know when... You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run, and you never count your money. While you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting when the, deal, when the dealing is done. I learned that from my mother who said it's, more, it's nice to be important, which she was in her work and for us at home. She was our queen, but it's more important to be nice. So I learned politeness from my mother. She, she bred that, inbred, you know, nurtured that in me as, as, as a boy and boy to man. And my mother nurtured boy to man as my, as my queen. And my, my egg was in my mother before she was born. 